Hey guys, welcome back and thank you for joining me for today's video. Today's video is going to be something a little bit different. It's something um, that really I just kind of decided to do quite last minute because I decided to treat myself to a few new techie bits and bobs, mostly from Amazon, um, and I thought I would do a YouTube and blogger tech haul video because I know that quite a lot of my um, viewers and also blog readers are bloggers themselves or they're just really interested in photography. So if that sounds like you, then this video hopefully will be really useful for you. And I thought instead of it just being like an unboxing, I have a massive Amazon box to my left, I thought I would also use this opportunity to let you know what equipment that I use. And um, I've got about four cameras, so I thought it would be interesting to go through what cameras I use for what type of content and also the little gadgets that I've picked up along the way that make my vlogging and YouTube life a little bit easier. So if you are a blogger or a YouTuber or you're interested in photography then yeah hopefully this will be really interesting for you. I should say I'm not a professional photographer, I'm not a professional videographer, I've only been doing YouTube for a year so I'm not an expert but I think I'd quite enjoy watching this type of video so hopefully it will be of interest to you. Before I open um, the box, I think logistically it would make more sense for me to talk about what I use now and how I find it, so if you just wanted to see the unboxing of the new stuff, I'll leave like a, um, I don't know what they're called when you have like the time, I'll leave the time point down below so you can skip to the unboxing if that's what you're interested in. But first I'm going to go through what I currently use. I'm going to tie my hair up because I'm having a bad hair day and it's annoying me. Okay, I feel much better now and ready to get down to business now that I've got my hair tied up. So I'm going to start with the camera that I'm filming this on because that's the camera that I get the most questions about, what do you film your YouTube videos on, so I'm going to start with that one. Um, but to talk about it, I'm going to use my vlogging camera, which I will talk about shortly. So I'm going to switch over to this camera to let you guys know about that camera. Okay, so this is my current filming setup. I've got the window, um, I've got the curtains wide open, natural daylight, and this here is a camera that I film my YouTube videos on. So it is the Canon EOS 600D, um, and I just flip the screen out, I don't currently use any microphones, and it's fairly easy to use, I just have it on the video setting, and I have got the 40mm lens, which I find really good for creating that blurry background. And to get that camera to work, I use a remote, so this has two flips on the back, and it's basically photo mode or video mode. So that's how I get the camera starting, so I sit down on the bed, and I click record. So that's the camera that I'm currently using to film my YouTube videos and to film that section I used this which is my Canon G7X Mark II. I did originally have the Mark I but I had microphone problems with that one so I upgraded to the Mark II. This is a really good vlogging camera, I know a lot of YouTubers also use this for vlogging and the reason why it's so great is firstly because it's tiny. I love the Olympus pen but it's pretty big, fairly heavy, um, which makes it not ideal for vlogging, especially if you do have a smaller handbag or you just don't want to be carrying so much around with you. The screen on this one flips up, which personally I find really unflattering, so I just hold the camera upside down so that the lens is underneath and that way I don't get eye bags when I'm vlogging. Quality wise, I find this camera really good, I find that low level lighting it performs better than the Olympus pen, um, but there are many upsides to the Olympus pen which I will go through shortly. So yeah, this is what I currently vlog on, I don't really do that much else with this camera, only vlogging and for that purpose it serves me really really well. Onto the pen and I feel like I could film a whole video just about the Olympus pen because it is truly a fabulous camera. It is the blogger's favourite for so many reasons, mainly because it's just so easy to take incredible photos, especially when it comes to outfit photos. This lens here, which is the 45mm lens, is every blogger's best friend and also I use it for shooting lookbook videos so if you've seen any of my videos where I'm in a foreign country and, or actually even in the UK, my lookbook videos are nearly always filmed on the Olympus pen with the 45mm lens because it's so portable. Going out in the evenings I don't want to carry a massive camera around with me. This one's beautiful with a shoulder strap, it's just so so easy to carry. It is lightweight as well, not as lightweight actually. Weight wise they're not that different, it's just that this is a little bit bigger. I use this on the manual mode for taking blog photos or I use it on video mode for taking videos. So when it comes to shooting really high quality video on the go, this is really really fab but because the screen flips down on this one it's not so convenient to attach to my current tripod but otherwise I probably would film my videos at home on this as well. 
Only major downside to the Olympus pen for me is how it performs in low level lighting and when I picked up the G7X that was the thing that really made me make the jump from vlogging on this to vlogging on the G7X. If you just want to buy one camera to really kickstart your YouTube channel, if you want to be vlogging, if you want to take some really good videos when out and about, you cannot beat the Olympus pen and if you want to take beautiful outfit photos, if you don't have a YouTube channel but just have a blog, then the Olympus pen and the 45mm lens will be your best friend because it's so easy to take those point and shoot blurry background photos. You don't need to be a professional photographer, you don't really need to be good at photography, I trained Charlie to do it within maybe like a week and he was taking really good photos. I'll leave some examples on the screen now which Charlie has taken. He's not a photographer, literally point focus and take the photo and you're done and you get beautiful, beautiful blurry background photos with the 45mm lens. I am actually getting some new lenses soon to really vamp up my, vamp up, amp up my blog photos, um, particularly the 75mm lens, so once I've got that, if you'd like to know a little bit more about that, then let me know and maybe I'll do another video just about the Olympus pen because as I said, there is a lot to know about this camera, I know a lot of bloggers um, either have got it or are interested in it, so if you'd like to know more about the Olympus pen then let me know in the comments and maybe I will do a pen specific video. Next we have the most recent addition to my camera family and this is the Canon EOS 6D and I decided to invest in this because I really wanted to improve my blog photography, my videography on a very high quality scale so I picked up the Sigma 35mm lens and to be honest I haven't actually used it that much recently. I'm determined to really understand how this camera works, to learn all the different settings um, but I just haven't really had time to sit down and work it yet. So this camera, I've had it for about two weeks now and I haven't really used it so I can't talk too much about this but what I do know is that also when I put the 40mm lens on which is currently on that camera um, it takes stunning, stunning photos, so hopefully you'll see an increase in quality in my blog photos and YouTube videos very soon, thanks to this bad boy. Next, on to accessories and things that I find make my YouTube life a little bit easier. I already mentioned this, which is a remote, um, and it basically means that I can zap my camera on and off while I'm sitting away from it without having to like lean in and fiddle with any dials. I do want to get to a stage where I have a cord going from my camera to my laptop and I know it's really easy I just I don't really have anywhere to put my laptop and I don't mind talking to the screen so for me the remote works really well and I think these are about 4 99 on eBay so really really cheap to pick up I suggest getting 4 or 5 because I do lose these quite frequently. Next I have a mini gorilla pod and this is actually believe it or not strong enough to hold my SLR camera, especially the 600D. I haven't actually tried it with my 6D, but um, I'm sure it would probably be okay. And this is incredibly useful for traveling because obviously it bends round, so you can clip your camera onto chair backs or bed frames or whatever you want to wrap it round, and it will support your camera at any angle, so perfect for taking videos or even photos when you are traveling. For me, I've used this so many times since I bought it, I think it was about £15, so that was a really, really good investment. I also recommend getting a few pouches, and I find these really useful for storing my cameras. I store my G7X in here when I'm hanging around in the day but also to store your lenses. So this is my Olympus pancake lens. When I vlog on the Olympus, I use this, and it's a very good quality lens. You do still get that beautiful depth of field, but not as intense, obviously, as a 45mm lens. Definitely make sure you don't lose the backs of your lenses, because if any dust gets in the back here, then your lens is not going to be taking as sharp photos and also make sure you are careful with your lens covers. I'm actually fairly surprised that this lens cover has survived because I've gone through so many on the Olympus and you'll notice on this lens I actually have an automatic lens cover which was a really really good investment. I think it was only about £14 from Amazon but it screws on and off and basically it automatically opens and closes as you turn the camera on which means I don't lose my lens cap when I'm vlogging on the Olympus pancake lens. Then the last couple of bits and bobs that I've got in this bag are a couple of spare batteries. I've got a spare for my G7X and a spare for the Olympus pen and these have come in handy so many times. The worst thing in the world is if you're out vlogging for the day or filming a lookbook and your battery dies so it's always worth buying a few spare batteries for every camera really whether that's for your big ones so that when you're filming a video 
the battery dies, you can have a spare one charging, because there's nothing worse than having to pause your video and waiting two hours for your battery to charge. So definitely pick up a few spare batteries and keep them in the pouch that goes in your handbag, just so that you're never caught without any charge. So that's the equipment that I currently use for my blogging and my YouTube channel. If you would like further information on any of the cameras, then I actually wrote a blog post on this topic a little while ago. I don't think it includes the G7X or the 60, but if you want to know more about this camera that I'm filming on and also my Olympus Pen, I did write a blog post with more details and I will leave a link to that one down below. But let's now have a look at what I've decided to invest in. Before I get started, I'll let you know about my lighting setup. So so in the winter months where it's really dull and I don't have days like today when I can film in natural daylight, I use two softbox lights and I think you can pick up two for about 30 to 50 pounds on Amazon. I just pretty much got the cheapest ones that were available and they're great, they work really well, they illuminate the background and you in a flattering way, but they are freaking massive and when I say massive I mean this room is taken over by the two softbox and if I decide to film downstairs it just takes over the whole lounge so as soon as we started getting a few sunny days where I could film in natural daylight like today I put them up in the loft and I'm just so grateful to have the space back in my room I'd say the videos that I've filmed for the past four months have all been done in natural daylight. This video is being filmed in natural daylight, sometimes I tweak the lighting a little bit in iMovie, um, but usually not so much. I do increase the brightness on my camera just to make the room a little bit brighter. But as you can see, even from right now, um, when it's cloudy it does change the light settings. The sun's about to come out so you'll see a really good example of that. Which is why I decided to invest in some new lighting and also a few new gadgets for my filming. So let's get started. Ooh, this is the box. It's fairly um, ginormous. I'm going to open this really carefully so I'm just going to pop it down in front of me. Probably should have got some better scissors than my nail scissors but hey ho. Okay, first of all there is a pack of two batteries for this camera, so as I mentioned earlier having spare batteries for the camera that you film on is so important if you don't want to be waiting around for that battery to charge up because when you film a video it pretty much uses the entire battery and if you want to film back to back which is really good for saving time um, then you're going to need some spare batteries so I ordered two new ones because I did actually recently lose my spare battery which has caused a lot of aggro so I've got two new spare batteries for my 600D by the way in case it is useful I will leave links to all the items I've bought down below as well as all my cameras um, and bits and bobs so all the links for everything I've mentioned will be down below. The next thing that I've decided to treat myself to is a proper microphone. So recently I've been doing a few more voiceovers and how I usually do that is I film the video and then I edit the video and then I record myself talking on my G7X and the quality is not that great so I decided to invest in one of these which I can plug into this camera while I'm filming um, and also plug into my laptop to film voiceovers. So this is the Video Mic Go lightweight on camera microphone and hopefully you will notice a really good improvement in my sound quality. The main thing in this box is this. So I finally decided to get a ring light. I've actually heard arguments for and against getting a ring light, but um, I decided that I wanted to give it a try and I found this one for £70. So not cheap by any means, but I really felt that for my summer videos especially, they take up so much less room than a softbox. So this is the ring light packaging. Let's open it up and have a little look. Okay, so first of all, it has come in this black carry case, which I think will be very, very useful if I happen to go on a trip where I know I'm going to be filming. This is actually fairly portable. I mean, it is big, but if I've got a luggage allowance that's fairly generous, then this might be worth taking with me. So you can never rely on the lighting in hotel rooms. It says the brand name on it, I'd forgotten, but it's called Niwa. So if it's good, then um, yeah, that's the brand that it is. So here it is, it's fairly big compared to my face, it's actually rather ginormous. There were a few different sizes, um, but this one seemed to be the most popular one, so picked up this size. Again, I'll leave all the information down below, cannot remember the millimetres off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, so this section down here is where it attaches to my tripod. 
that's got the LED light going all the way around with some reflective material in there. It's very lightweight but it does feel good quality. So um, let me just lastly show you the other accessories to go with this that I also bought and then we can try it out. So on Amazon it tells you what people that bought that also bought and a lot of people picked up this which is called the Niwa Mini Ball Head with Lock and Hot Shoe Adapter. And I think you need this adapter to plug the ring light into my tripod. So I will save this for when I'm attaching it. But I also decided to pick up this, which is a fabric diffuser. So hopefully this is going to make the lighting from the light a lot more flattering. But again, I'll open it up and do some before and after. So I'm going to try attaching this to my tripod now. And I'm going to flip over to my vlogging camera so that I can show you how to do it. Okay, so this is what my tripod looks like. Um, excuse the mess in the background, that's what a blogger's behind the scenes pretty much always looks like. Um, so I'm not sure I if I have to remove this top section in order to fit the ring light on. I think maybe I need to unscrew this so the ring light just slops on top. Okay, so after looking at a few different instructions, it looks like my tripod is only suitable for cameras and not for lighting. So I'm gonna go into the loft and get the stands for my massive soft boxes and see if I can attach the ring light to those instead. So this is what the top of my softbox light looks like and I feel like this is going to slot into there much better. Um, so let's try again using my softbox tripod. That was really easy, I just put the top of the tripod into the bottom of the light um, and then it tightened both of these nozzles so I screwed them both kind of like towards each other to tighten them. Now let's extend it and see if I can attach my camera inside. This is how we're looking so far after a couple of minutes of faffing. So this is the bit that I was saying came um, as the recommended bit from Amazon. Let's try and focus. There we go. Yeah, so this is the bit, um, I'll leave what it's called on the screen now, uh, that was recommended from Amazon. But weirdly, it doesn't seem to fit fully into here. So this is obviously some tracks where the bottom of this gadget, which screws into the camera, is meant to slide all the way forward. But I've tried loads of different angles and it is just not sliding forward. The bottom bit is just too big to slide all the way in, which means that any knocks and my camera is going to go flying backwards. So I need to try to put some like WD-40 on it or something or alternatively find a new one. So I will keep you guys updated as to the solution. Check the description box um, and if I do find a solution, I'll put a little memo down there. But for now, um, I will just show you what it does. So basically, the bottom of the camera wouldn't be able to slot in here anyway. So you need to get some kind of adapter. And this one has a flexible ball on it, which means I can alter the angle of my camera. I can't really do it very well one-handedly. But you can tilt the camera down, tilt it side to side, which gives you greater flexibility with your camera when you're filming. You've got the electricity connector for the light down here. So I'm going to plug it in and then we can see what it looks like. So the on and off buttons are here, I've got it switched on now, um, there's the on and off switch, so actually it's weird, they actually seem to be the wrong way around. So I'm going to switch it to the off position, which is actually the on position, and you can see it started to light up the bedroom over there. And then you've got a dimmer switch, but I'll show you in a second, it's incredibly subtle, I'm sorry about the blurriness by the way, this camera's focus on the G7X is really off recently. There we go. So you can see the dimmer switch, although, um, let me show you now, it's really, really subtle. Brightest, dullest, and an effect on the background, dull, bright. Very, very subtle. And now the all important, let's see how it looks for my videos. Okay, so the ring light is now on and switched on, so I'd be interested to see what it looks like in the big screen if there's much difference, because to be honest, in my tiny screen of the 600D, I cannot see much difference. I have started it off on nearly the dimmest setting, so as I mentioned, it's got a dimmer switch, and this is nearly the dimmest setting, so let me turn it up to full blast, and you guys can see what that looks like. <laughs> it's so bright, it's almost like too dazzling for me to look at. So this is what my room and my face looks like with it on full setting. To be perfectly honest, it's too dazzling for my eyes. Thankfully, I've got the diffuser, so I'm going to try popping this on and seeing what the effect is like with my diffuser. Ok, 
today I've just switched to my vlogging camera to show you the most epic design fail. So considering that all of these items were recommended for me to buy together, the camera does not reach through the hole in the diffuser and the little dangly thing on the back isn't adjustable so I can't increase my camera height. It's just ridiculous, like that's such a design flaw, so look at this. My little camera is sitting here and the lens is nowhere near the hole. This thing is not adjustable so I cannot raise the height of my camera. So what I'm going to have to do for now until I find a solution is put my camera on this and then aim it through there. Not ideal. I now have my two tripods straddling each other so that my camera is at a height um, that it can see through the um, diffuser. So this diffuser better be worthwhile in order for me to do this. I've had to spend quite a while fiddling around with the positioning so that it doesn't get any of the diffuser in the screen like you can see in the top corner there. So let's see if it's worth all of this faff. I'm having to like sneak through the diffuser to even see myself on the screen to make sure I'm in focus. So now I can't see the screen, um, just thought I could probably put the camera in front of the diffuser and that would so solve all of those problems. But either way, such a massive design flaw. I can't see myself now, I've got no idea if I'm in focus or not, or even if I'm positioned right. So that's a major, major design flaw. If anyone knows if there is a version of this which is extendable, that would probably make my life a lot easier and then I could just plug my camera into my laptop to be able to see myself. So that would be problem solved, but for now I have the weirdest setup. As you can see on the vlogging camera, I have this to look at currently. The light is a lot softer, it's not hurting or dazzling my eyes in the slightest, um, but I do have the very weird tripod setup. But for my own comfort and also heat, it's a lot cooler than um, when the light was directly against my face. <laughs> so perhaps I should have done a little bit more research or perhaps I'm trying to buy too many gadgets and should just settle for just the light without the diffuser um, or maybe I just need to buy a new dongle. But for now, any recommendations that you guys have, if you have a ring light and know some solutions, then please let me know in the comments. I'm going to spend some time over the next few weeks really getting to grips with this setup and for any future videos that I film I will leave a little note in the description as to what I've used, whether I used a ring light, whether I used a diffuser, so hopefully that will be useful for you guys. Hope you enjoyed looking through all my new pieces with me, my first ever tech haul, let me know if you like the idea um, and what you think of the filming with the lighting. Obviously as I think I mentioned earlier it will be a lot more extreme in winter, I would not be able to film without the artificial light in the winter months because this room isn't terribly well lit especially when the daylight is very minimal so in winter I think this is going to be a really good asset if you'd like to see an update video in maybe a couple of months about how I'm getting along with it then let me know and otherwise if you do have any comments then or questions then you can leave them in the comments section down below but if you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to my channel and I'll see you very soon bye